Back in the early 1990s, Maine's congressional delegation, state government, and a lot of people in Arista County worried about the closing of Loring Air Force Base. As the Cold War seemed to be winding down, there was a big push for the federal government to save money by closing some military bases. All of those bases provided jobs, and the effort to replace those jobs in northern Maine has been something of a roller coaster for all of those involved. 207's Don Kerrigan headed to the county to find out why people there have renewed hope that development will finally come. Hey, Don. They do. Hi there, Samantha and Rob. Those of us who have followed the Loring Air Force Base story since the days when it was a thriving base uh, may assume that everybody just knows about Loring Air Force Base. But for those who don't, we start with a brief geography lesson, and it helps to explain why redeveloping that base has been so tough and why it's so important for Northern Maine. Loring Air Force Base was a big one, home to B-52 bombers, nuclear weapons, and thousands of Air Force personnel. The old base is 170 miles north of Bangor, 320 road miles from Portland, and just minutes from Canada. In other words, compared to the rest of the country, Loring is remote. One big reason, it's been tough to attract new business and jobs. Welcome to what used to be Loring Air Force Base. It was 30 years ago that the U.S. Air Force left Northern Maine, and ever since, the local Loring Development Authority has been working, often struggling, to bring back the jobs and economy that left when the Air Force did. It's been tough, but they've got some glimmers of hope right now for a new effort they think might just work. The challenges are plentiful. <laughs> uh, number one, it's you know it's a it's a challenging location. It's uh, winters are tough here. It's you know we're not in a populated area. Carl Flora has been part of the redevelopment effort from the beginning, and he's been CEO and president of the Loring Development Authority for more than 15 years. It stood guard during 40 years of yes, wicked winters. Flora says when Loring closed in 1994, the future looked promising. The Pentagon agreed to locate a branch of the Defense Finance and Accounting Service on the base. Nearly 600 people still work here today. Important jobs for this area. And with the state's help, they created the Maine Military Authority to rebuild damaged military Humvees and other vehicles sent from all over the country. They started with about 20 people and grew to uh, a maximum of about 500. That is success. Yes, yes, but it, uh, it also, uh, you know, turned the corner and went the other way. And uh, by about 2017 or 2018, the, you know, the numbers had gone to close to zero and eventually they closed their doors, so. Losing that tenant and those jobs was a real blow. But after that, uh, yeah, it, it's just, there was nothing that, that came very easily. And we were very short on, on uh, resources, uh, really didn't have the resources to put into business attraction. Um, we were just trying to keep the lights on. So they decided to make a very big change, sell part of the base to a private developer. We needed capital. Uh, to put into the place. We needed uh, a, a rejuvenated effort to market. In April, they sold 450 acres of the base and about half the buildings to Scott Hinkle, a developer from the Portland area. His job will be what they're calling master developer, who will then take charge of finding new uses and new businesses to move in. It's the same approach that was taken to rejuvenate parts of the former Navy base in Brunswick. And Steve Levesque, who directed that process, is now working as a consultant to help market Loring. Is there interest? There is interest. There is interest. And one of the things we're doing, we have to set the platform. Um, we have to get this airport uh, set up to be FAA certified. Making this an official airport is one of their keys to bringing in new business. If they can get the FAA to agree, that should mean federal funding to make repairs to the giant runways and other upgrades. But Levesque and Carl Flora say it's not about bringing in passengers. It's about using the big old hangars to bring in big planes 
to get overhauled. This is the closest airport to Europe and the United States. Um, so, you know, there's opportunities here and, and aircraft that, you know, a flying time from Bangor to here is an extra half hour in a jet. So it's not a big deal um, to come in and have a facility where you can work on your aircraft. They also believe the buildings and the runway can help draw new aerospace businesses. The runway, after all, was the emergency landing site for the space shuttle. This asset would probably cost five to ten billion dollars to replicate. So it's already here, it's already paid for by the taxpayer. Why not try to reuse it? But there is another very different project that also has Loring's leaders quietly crossing their fingers. How big would that be? That would be huge. We're talking 650 full-time employees, uh, and that, that's just at the plant site here. There's all kinds of additional spin-off uh, economic uh, impact in the, uh, in the forested lands. Carl Flora says a company called DG Fuels from Washington is looking hard at Loring to build a biorefinery that would produce aviation fuel from waste wood. It could become a billion dollar investment. The developer is spending real money, uh, which I don't think they would do if they didn't think they, there was a good chance that uh, this thing would work out. They say a project that big would require 2,000 people for construction, and that would need lots of new housing on the old base. All of those prospects helped to lure the new master developer, Scott Hinkle, and his company called Green for Maine. Did your friends or an associates think you were crazy? Of course, of course. You know, it's like, you know, you know when you say, oh yeah, you want to buy an Air Force base? <sighs> they, they could, they're like, you're out of your mind. Scott Hinkle, though, believes he will have the last laugh. He has big dreams and big plans to bring new jobs to Loring and new opportunity to a county that can use it. And tomorrow here on 207, we'll talk with that new master developer about what he plans and hopes to do and why he is so convinced that the quiet old Air Force Base in northern Maine is soon going to get a lot more lively. All right. Thanks, Don. We'll see you.